Hello and welcome to another uncut process video. So these kind of videos are for those of you who just want to craft along, who want to have a very relaxed craft session with me. I put a few minutes of thought into this before I turned on the camera, just so I wouldn't be completely stuck starting the video today. So this is my little art journal. I will link my uncut playlist for you below. As you've probably seen from the title, this is number four. And I also have videos on the making of and the story of this little art journal. So you can catch up with that if this is new for you. To be honest, I don't know how much crafting I'm going to get done today. It might be more talking than crafting. <laughs> but we'll just see how it goes. And I must say, opening up this journal now makes me so much more happy. This front page is so much better than what I had. Still not happy with this. I mentioned in my last episode that I wanted to find an actual letter from my mom instead of this one, which is from my digital kit, Keeper of Memories. Now, I did search a little bit for those letters but I couldn't find any so far, so I will have to keep searching. So one idea for today that I had was I have this photo here of my mom and she is practicing some typing. And I thought this typing kind of looks like it could be journaling, right? So I wanted to use this here, which is the negative of the journal that I cut out here. And I would have loved to place this somehow on this photo because I think that would be so cool, but it's kind of big. So then I thought, okay, no problem. I have smaller letters. Maybe I'll show you the set that this is from first. So these letters are from this set, Sizzix and Tim Holtz with the number 665924. And the name is Alphanomeric Theory. And then I remembered I also have this set and the number is 662687, also Sizzix and Tim Holtz. And this one has the name gift card bag because it also has this gift card. And I always forget I have this stencil and I thought these would be smaller. So this is what that looks like which is actually a lot nicer than this one because this set is actually meant to use the negatives, as you can see here on the image, whereas this one, you're actually meant to use the positive, so the letters like I have here, and this is just like a byproduct. So this one looks a lot better, and I thought it would be smaller because the letters are not as high as you can see, but the width isn't actually different at all. <laughs> So that didn't really play out as planned, but we'll try to work with this anyway. So first I want to trim both the photo and this. Yeah, and there's a few things I want to talk to you about today. One might be a bit of a rant. I'll, I'll try to stay calm. just want to cut this because cutting and talking doesn't work well on video because the cutting is too loud. So that looks pretty cool. Let me just cut down the photo of my mom. Okay, let me just figure out what to do and then I'll start telling you what I wanted to talk about. So, of course, this looks really cool with the dark background that I have here. It might look really weird though. I don't know. I kind of like it like this. I would have loved to have it down here, but it's a bit long. I could, of course, put something else behind the L here. But I also kind of like it here on this dark area. I do still want to see that my mom is typing. It's so funny when I look at this photo, you know, today when you have a typewriter like this, which I do, it's, it's a vintage typewriter. But of course, back then, this was a normal typewriter. <laughs> 
there were no computers so that was it and i think that's so funny today we tried to find vintage typewriters and they are not easy to find and we pay a lot of money for them <laughs> it just cracks me up okay so can i just commit to something <laughs> sometimes it's so hard to just commit i also thought about putting it in one of these frames this is a freebie which i will link for you below but i think none of these are going to work because the photo is too big and i don't want to cut it down oh but you know what i could do i could just put it on top here so that it gets just a little bit of a frame because i thought you know if i just cut this out i'm going to lose so much of the photo but actually i could just do that yeah this one does not work so well. Okay, so let's do that. Let's cut this one out then as well. Yeah, so what I wanted to talk to you about was my two sales that I had with physical products in my shop because both you probably would never know but went wrong on the back end. And I'm so frustrated because it's out of my hands and I've realized, I've realized that again this morning at the post office, two things that really trigger me <laughs> are incompetence and inefficiency. Can, can anyone relate? <laughs> and I find it so hard, especially the older I get, it, it is not getting better to, to deal with these uh, attributes in a calm and polite way <laughs> i really try but i sometimes i really struggle okay let me just think do i want to know i'm not going to ink anything up i'm just gonna glue things down okay so if you're not aware i have had two sales of physical products for each sale i had put up 10 products because I was sure I couldn't handle more than 10 at a time because the admin behind it is uh, quite extensive and I don't have any help so I do everything on my own. Yeah so the first time I sold junk journal jewelry, 10 handmade pieces and then I sell them through my regular online shop and it was the first time that I ever sold physical products and I was nervous anyway because I didn't know how things would work. And what happened was that two of the chains that I sold were shown as out of stock on my website, even though they were not sold. So apparently the two viewers that were trying to buy these had uh, credit cards that were declined several times, but for some reason they were still showing as out of stock until I manually put them in the shop again like half an hour later or something not being 100 percent sure that they weren't already purchased because they were gone from the from the website you know what i mean so i was so worried that i would have sold them twice but no apparently at least that then worked out so in the end i sold all 10 pieces and everything was okay but of course it, it was a bit frustrating because why do i have to put some of my products manually back online just because a credit card is declined i don't understand it should have never been out of stock but okay that was that so then i had my second sale selling vintage ephemera books how do we like this it's kind of interesting no i don't know i like it so i'm going to find a spot for that although i don't like the empty back here i mean just put something on there quickly or maybe i should think about writing something i could just journal about my experiences actually and my frustration instead of just decorating the back let me just quickly do that and i'll fast forward this part because you don't need to uh, watch me write and i think it would make me nervous <laughs> Okay, short and sweet. Basically, I just wrote what I just told you and that I need to work on myself to deal better with these situations and to just take a breath. And whatever it is that I'm going through with whoever is incompetent or inefficient at that moment, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, I just need to let loose. So let's just find a spot for this. 
Maybe here. Will it go in? That would be great. I think this would work so well here, but <laughs> the struggle. <laughs> nope, that's not happening. Although I think this would have looked so nice. I love this combination. Let's see if we can find any other place. Otherwise I can add it as a flip out. Ah, we did that one last time. I thought I had more pockets in here, but uh, I guess I was wrong. Oh, there's a pocket, but I don't really want to hide that much of it. I mean, it is kind of cute because my dad's here, my mom's here. So I guess that would work out. Okay, I guess if there's nothing else, I could do that. Love this so much because it's glazed. I could, of course, make another pocket. That would be another solution. Oh, I have a belly band. Oh, that would work. That's actually really nice because the colors here go really well. Oh, yep, I think that's the solution. Let's move on. Let's find something else to add. What I would really love to add is something from here. This was just sent to me recently in a mail from Anna from the UK, who has moved on from junk journaling. And she was sweet enough to send me and also Louise some of her stash, which is super cool. And I love these bright colors. I think they go really well into this little art journal. So I love this flower right here. I also love this one. Let me grab my fabric scissors. So let me get back to my story. <laughs> so for the second sale, I had my vintage ephemera books. And again, of course, I was nervous because obviously the first time things had gone wrong and I wasn't sure what was going to go wrong this time. And sure enough, things went wrong. Each book was obviously a unique book and I only had one of each. And for some reason, two of the books sold twice. And it makes me feel horrible because imagine you purchase something a unique item from someone whose videos you enjoy. It doesn't matter if you enjoy their videos. You're buying a unique product and you pay for it. You check out, everything's fine. And then you receive an email saying, oh, I'm so sorry, this item was sold twice and I cannot send it to you and I will refund you the money. I mean, how unprofessional is that? So I, of course, wrote an apology email to both immediately but it just leaves such a bad taste behind and you know it doesn't make me seem very trustworthy either obviously and of course I wrote an email to the techies of my platform but I'm still waiting for a reply so overall a very frustrating experience most of all of course for my customers for my viewers but also for me because that's not the kind of business I want to have how cute are these yeah, so I don't know if I'll be selling on my store in the future, like physical products. Of course, I'll, I'll keep my digital products, but uh, I think I'll have to find another solution because uh, I don't want to go through this every time I sell something because someone's going to be disappointed. And that's just very frustrating. So what do we do with you? I'm not very concentrated. <laughs> on what I'm doing at the moment. So I don't know how much you're gonna get out of this creative-wise. I'm, I'm still not happy with this. So this was a candy wrapper for chocolate I got at the Art Journal Festival here in Vienna. But I mean, I like the idea of including this wrapper as a pocket, but I don't know why I'm not happy with it. So I 
think I need to change that first of all and cover that up with something. Also, the pink is not working for me here. This blue would match this blue here. Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, so I'll have to do some research on how to, on where to put these items in the future. I do have an account on Gumroad, so that would be quite easy. Or I could also probably just put it on my Kofi site, which is where I have my freebies. Maybe that would be an option. So I'll have, look, have to look into it because I do also want to sell some journals at some point. Another option might be Instagram, but that's a lot of hassle because everything is manual. So that's a lot of messages back and forth. And I would have to produce an invoice manually and all of that. So not sure if that's the route I want to go. That is too see-through. I'm so distracted in my head. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get anything done in this session. But also I'm distracted because I actually just came back from like a mini vacation. And so my head isn't really back in work mode. I mean, you can't really call this work. <laughs> this is more like playtime, especially when I get to do such a relaxed video where I don't have to really plan ahead. And this is actually very pretty. Mm, not sure, but we'll give it a try. I thought I would film this because I think it's the perfect way for me to get back into making videos because this is also very relaxing for me, not just for you to watch. And by the way, this is part of the pamphlet that we received at the Art Journal Festival. Yeah, so I was gone in total five days with my hubby and my brother. That's a, That was a new combination. Never tried that before, but it worked very well. Everyone got along. <laughs> it's always very good, right? <laughs> And we drove to Germany to an amusement park. It's very hard to work and talk at the same time when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> like when you don't have a plan. Let me just figure this out. What do I actually want to do here? Okay, I'm gonna cut a half circle here. So the plan was originally to go to like an amusement park called called, <laughs> called Legoland. I'm assuming you all know what Lego is, <laughs> these toys for kids. And there's a Legoland, which is also an amusement park. And I've never been and neither have my hubby or my brother. This one I am going to ink up, although I cannot explain why this one needs to be inked up. Let's just... Intuition, I guess. I'm using walnut stain. Because Legoland is on the way to uh, what's called Europa Park, which is like a uh, Europe park, which is an amusement park like Disney, but without Disney. So it has other characters. But the interesting thing about Europe Park, I'll just say how they would say it originally, Europa Park is that the company that made the attractions for Disneyland Paris, they first constructed Disneyland Paris, and then when they had their knowledge of how to do it and learned from their mistakes, they constructed Europa Park, meaning that Europa Park is actually better than Disney. I thought that was a very interesting piece of information. And Europa Park is... I think pretty much consistently rated the top amusement park in Europe. And I think it's even among the top five worldwide. I think it has more attractions than Disney. And I've been to Disney just last year in December with my dear friend Bea from France. 
Hello, sweetie. <laughs> and we had such a lovely time and it was really nice to see Europa Park now in comparison in just a few months in between. I need to put something else on here. This is too plain. Yeah, so going back, the plan was to spend a day first in Legoland because it's right on the way. So Legoland is about five and a half hours away from Vienna. Ooh, I love it. This is from my more recent kit. If I only knew the name now, <laughs> I always forget my kit names. Ah, it's called Lives Remembered. I just looked it up in my shop. And then we found out a few days before that uh, they're closed on exactly that day that we were supposed to be there. They were closed for two days in total. And uh, that day and the next day, they were closed. Unfortunately, it was too late to change our hotel. They wouldn't let us cancel anymore. <laughs> so we drove there and we arrived in the evening and we drove on to Europa Park the next day, which was another almost three hours. And so we had two days in Europa Park and it was so much fun. Oh my goodness. I just love these kind of parks because there you can just be a little kid. I'm just going to see if I have a die cut or something to put here. You know, you can forget all your troubles and work and everything. And I haven't had any break since January. So I really felt like I needed a break. Oh, that's quite nice. So we had two days there and two days was perfect and timing was perfect because uh, there was nobody else. <laughs> I mean, obviously there were a few people, but uh, we didn't have to wait in line anywhere. And I even tried like some smaller roller coasters and like rides where there's a big splash zone <laughs> where you get wet, totally out of my comfort zone. Uh, wouldn't do it again, but I'm, I'm proud of myself that I tried them. And we, we just had a really good time. And then the next day, we weren't sure if we were going to do that. But since we couldn't do the Legoland, we decided to go to this water park, which is actually a part of Europa Park. It's called Rolantica. That was so much fun. We almost didn't go because I was like, yeah, you know, a water park. But it was so much fun. And I could have even spent another whole day there because they had so many different slides and things to do. It was just so much fun. I don't have many videos or photos of that park because I had my phone in a locker all day because, you know, you're around water all day long and I didn't want to have the phone with me. Barbara, just go with what you've already picked. Come on. <laughs> okay, let's do that. And then we drove back eight hours. That wasn't so fun, but yeah, it was totally worth it. Prices were totally okay. Like it's so much cheaper than the entrance fees you would pay in Disney or Universal or something like that in the US. I have been numerous times and I love those parks and I will go again. <laughs> like if I compare it to Universal or even Disney, course the difference is I, I need to ink this up a bit because it's too pale the difference is that in Europa Park I didn't know any of the characters I don't know if those characters are known to kids in Germany maybe but I didn't know any of the characters so of course you don't have the same connection as you would at say Universal where you're on a let's say Harry Potter ride or Jurassic Park or whatever, you know, but still it was a lot of fun. And we even went on rides that were more like for smaller kids. <laughs> we went anyway and we had a blast. I think if you go to a park like this, you just have to kind of go with it and just be a kid. Okay, I like this. And it was also cool because I, I've never done anything like this or I've never actually been on a trip with my brother since we we're grown ups. And that was also a fun experience because my brother is a sweetheart. In the evenings, we played board games, which I also love a lot. It was just really nice to get away, to get a little break. And it's also nice to come back home. Isn't that the best kind of vacation? 
where you're looking forward to going and you're looking forward to coming back. Okay, I am so much happier with this now. I still want to find a place for these two, or at least one of them. If I add it here, I would match this color here, which would of course help, but it's kind of weird to just place it there. Maybe on a tab, I could make a fabric tab and then just add that on top. So let me look for some fabric. I found this one. I wanted something neutral. Yeah, I think that's cute. And then what also frustrated me is I got back and I found a notice in my mailbox that there's a package. There were actually two packages and I had to go pick those up from the post office. So I went there this morning and I got one and that was fine. And they couldn't find the other one. <laughs> and they were asking me like, well, what is it? And I'm like, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> It didn't say on the form that I got from the post office. It didn't say who the sender was or what kind of package or anything. So I'm like, well, if you guys don't tell me, then I don't know what it is. They just couldn't find it. So now they're searching for it. I have no idea what it is or from who it is. Very frustrating. And that's where the incompetence <laughs> comes in, which I just find so frustrating. So how do we like this? I might just go for it because I have the feeling I'm not in the most creative headspace at the moment. But I think the important thing is, even if you don't feel super creative, to show up anyway. Obviously, there'll be days when you really don't feel like it. But I also find that creativity doesn't just come if you're just sitting on the couch, you know what I mean? At least for me, I find that creativity comes from being creative, you know? Like, the more creative you are, the more you'll feel like you want to be creative instead of just waiting for motivation to come. Just do it anyway, and usually, at least for me, that's the case. I find so much joy in creating once I start. Like, I would never regret starting to work in a journal or, you know, just making bits of ephemera or whatever, just dyeing paper. There's so many things you can do, even if you don't feel like working on pages. So thank you, Anna, for this cute piece. It now lives in my journal. What about this one? Maybe we can find a spot for that as well. I have rarely worked in a journal for so long so randomly. You know, just putting bits on different papers. This is interesting for me because usually I would kind of work more methodically. But this is actually kind of fun and I'm not losing interest yet anyway. I'm still really enjoying this format. Like I think these two pages don't go together at all. And it actually bugs me but I'm, I'm not feeling it at the moment to change it. We have this pink there, so maybe we should have some here. It needs to be on the bottom, like it needs to be a diagonal rather than linear like this because it's just more dynamic this way. I could just make another fabric tab. Tabs always work for me. <laughs> They're always a fun and easy addition. They give you extra texture. Let's just do that. Let's not overthink things. Let's just keep it relaxed and easy. Don't have to make any big decisions. <laughs> Okay, 
And I'm just being lazy, not using my fabric glue. That just seems more balanced and I just realized how perfect this is because it even has the green and the yellow that I have in the butterfly. Oh my goodness, I didn't even see that. That is perfection. I have this ephemera book which is in the style of the ones that I just sold on my website and when I was flipping through this I realized I have so many printables in here that I haven't used. And I remember seeing some dragonfly stickers, which I think would work well in this little journal. And I cannot tell you where they're from because I've had them for years and I honestly don't remember. They could have been in a subscription box. I don't know. And I don't know when the last time was that I used a sticker in a journal or any project. So let's see if I can find a page or I can add one by just sticking it down. Oh, what about this one? Oh, yes, I think we have a winner already. The print itself is matte, but the border is glossy, so I don't know how these are going to look once I peel them off. might have to cut away the glossy border as much as I can, because I really don't like that. Yeah, so they have a pretty wide glossy border, so I am first going to cut that down. I don't even know why I don't use stickers anymore. Maybe if you don't use stickers anymore either, can you let me know why you don't? <laughs> Maybe we have the same reasons. Much better without the border, isn't it? Oh, I really like this. I think this might now need a sentiment. So I have this little booklet here from Studio Light, a Dutch company. This here is the number J-M-A-E-S-S-T-I-C-0-7. And they have different colors in here. They also have just letters, so you can spell out your own things. You see they have white and black and this kind of teal color. I'm thinking this teal color might work. That's kind of the perfect color for here. And how about this one? Either art is therapy, art is your voice, or art is healing. I like all of those and they're short enough to fit on here. How about art is healing? I think that goes really well with today's topic. <laughs> because I was not in a good emotional state at the beginning of this video, but now I'm already doing much better. Where do we put you? I think this needs to go right here. Art is healing. That has been proven to me over and over and over again. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. And I also like that this is this color because it's not taking away from this one here, which is German and says, Du bist Künstlerin, meaning you are an artist. That's a cute little page right there. Okay, let me find something else that's easy that I could just stick down because I think that's all I'm currently capable of. Maybe this one here. I think she is so adorable. And this is a smaller version of one of my background pages from my scrapbooking kit. I will link this for you below as well in case you want to check that out. And I'm just going to cut this out. This was from a test print. I always print my backgrounds out like two on one page. So basically they come out 
so I can just see what the colors print out like. I don't want to waste those, obviously. So a little journal like this is perfect for those. I would love to hear what you're working on at the moment. Are you making a journal? Are you working in a journal? Are you thinking about working in a journal? <laughs> I know some of you have been watching my videos for a while and you've been gathering supplies to make your own journals, but you still haven't started. So I don't know what it takes for you to start. I just hope that you manage to start one day. I mean, collecting the materials is obviously fun as well, but then you need to put them to use. They need to fulfill their destiny. And maybe it just seems a bit daunting, but just work in baby steps like I do. You don't have to know what the final journal is going to look like. Just start, I don't know, either start with the signatures or start with the covers. There's no right or wrong way. I sometimes do the covers first, sometimes I do the signatures first. But you just gotta start somewhere. Let's find a page. Maybe I should cut this off because this makes it very wide. So if you are one of those crafters that haven't started making your own journals yet and you've been watching these kind of videos for a longer time, let me know what is it that's keeping you from creating is it the fear of messing up? You're going to mess up. I can already tell you that. <laughs> we all mess up. I still mess up all the time. So don't wait for perfection because it's not going to happen. And you can only learn. This is actually quite nice. Keep that one in mind. We can only learn by making the mistakes, right? If we don't make mistakes, that means we're not trying anything new. So we have to make those mistakes. Be happy when you make mistakes because that's when we learn. And be patient with yourself. Don't compare your journal with someone who's made journals for years. The important thing is just to have fun. I think it's gonna have to be this one and this one also needs inking up yeah so there's no wrong or right when you make a journal and if you mess it up whatever that is usually there are solutions and if you can't find a solution then try another method there's so many different versions of journals Hard cover, soft cover, signatures hand stitched into your journal or just using some elastic bands or just embroidery thread to secure your signatures without actually stitching them in. But, but if you're afraid of stitching signatures in and you've never tried it, then please just try it. It's not as hard as you think it is. There are thousands of tutorials, I think, in the meantime. So let us know, by us I mean myself and the other viewers who read the comments, let us know what's holding you back and maybe we can encourage you somehow to finally get started. And then there's no turning back. I mean, once you've started, you're going to be hooked. <laughs> so I need to find something to put in this pocket here. So let me look at my scraps mostly die cut scraps oh there's a tag shape that would fit in there beautifully but what do we put on it hmm this butterfly or maybe i have another butterfly white one or a black one oh that contrast looks pretty cool or 
I have some fun with this butterfly and color that. Let's explore that option. And I think I'll take out my mica stains. I'll put my media mat underneath. And I'm putting my gloves on. And I'm using these colors. Wicked Elixir, Fortune Teller and Harvest Moon. And I need to shake them up well because I haven't had them on the side. So all the pigment and the mica powder is on the bottom here. And you need to shake them until you hear the metal ball moving around because otherwise the metal ball is stuck on the bottom. Yep, you see it right there. And that needs to move to mix everything. It's still stuck. Ah, there, you hear it now? Okay, we have unstuck it. So then when you look at the bottom and you see that uh, the pigment and the mica has moved, then I think you're in good shape. Okay, so I'm not spraying directly onto my butterfly. I'm also adding some water. So I'll add some water to the butterfly first. Just a little spray. Then let's add some green on my mat. Just a little bit. And then I think you need to go through it with your finger to break up those water droplets if that's what you want. And the thing is, you don't see the shine of the mica until it's dry. So this is very experimental. Let's take this fortune teller. Whoa. It's a super strong color, as you can see. Let's add some more water to make it flow. And then let's also add some of this Harvest Moon. And the cool thing with these micro sprays is that they're not going to blend a lot, especially if the other layer has dried already a bit. If I now add water again, they are going to mix. Still, even when they mix, you see the yellow is on top of the green. So it's a different effect than if you work with uh, like regular oxide sprays. So I'll dry this now and then we'll go in again. I have ordered more mica sprays in different colors because I'm loving them so much. I'm usually, oh, that was not a good idea. You see what I did to my glove? <laughs> they have started melting. Good job, Barbara. Anyway. <laughs> so we'll add some more spots of the purple. And actually now I hardly see any of my green anymore. So I might need to add some more green on top. So I'll dry it again. And this time I will not hold it in my hand. Okay, let's do some more green over here. And that should sit on top. Yeah, you see that? So let's try that one more time. Can you see the shine? Yeah, I think you can see it a little bit. We can also add some water drops on top to get a little more visual texture. Let's try that. So I'm just pushing this handle down slightly because I don't want a mist. I want water droplets. And then let's take a paper towel. And 
I can see it a little bit, like right there, but it's kind of hard to see. I'm almost thinking I should put this through my embossing machine again because it has become pretty flat now with all the moisture. Maybe I'll add a few more of the purple on top here. Mm. I think this needs to be reactivated. So just add a bit more water. Okay, now we've got some of the purple there. So I'll dry this one more time. Okay, let's clean this up. Just add some more water. And we can just wipe that off. And it's always a good idea to wipe the nozzle when you're done so that it prevents it from clogging. I think you still get clogged sometimes. I haven't so far, knock on wood, but I think that does happen, especially with these mica sprays. So let's emboss this together. So this is my Sizzix Fold Away die cut machine. And I always forget for the folders. I'll try it by removing this one plate. So this is the die cut folder. It's Sizzix Tim Holtz alterations line. And the thing is, it's unfortunately no longer available. I found this second hand. So I got this in a set die and embossing folder. The number is 660236. Oh, you can't see anything, I'm so sorry. 660236. It's one of these Bigs die cuts and it's called Butterfly Duo. Maybe you can find it on eBay or at a flea market or something by chance. I'm so, so thankful that I found this. And this is actually still quite damp, which I think is maybe a good thing. So let's put this in here. Also, I can never remember which side needs to go where because I think it's going. Okay, I think I need to turn it around like that. Hopefully, that's correct. My goodness look at all this dye that came out wow i was not expecting that okay. so it looks like i got the right side can you see now how nicely embossed it is yeah i think that was a good decision i do want to dry this a little bit more Let's move this out of the way again. And now, do we just put it on a white background? I mean, it does look cool. Another thing I could try that I've actually always wanted to try is the following. I don't know how to do what I wanted to do. So this here is from this die set. Again, Sizzix Tim Holtz with the number 665929 and it's called Vintage Labels. But I'm wondering if there's an embossing folder that goes with these because how else do you color the borders like that? I know there's a Tim Holtz Live where he shows how to do this, but I'm not going to look for that now. And I don't know how to color these without an embossing folder so that it just gets the edges like that. Oh, that's a bummer. That would have looked really cool. Can I just somehow color the frame? It doesn't make sense, does it? It would have to be like alcohol ink or something. I 
should we just try adding some Distress Oxide on here? What's the worst that can happen, right? Let's just try this. I really don't know how else this could work. So let's see if... <laughs> This Villainous Potion, which is a super strong color, will stick here, but of course it won't. No, that's not going to work. I know it works with an embossing folder, but of course this, well, or does it? Maybe it works. Maybe we've just discovered something new. <laughs> Well, it's on there, so let's grab our embossing machine one more time. It's not an embossing machine, Barbara. What are you talking about? <laughs> I am super curious. And you know what? I already messed up <laughs> my tag. <laughs> good job, good job. Okay, let's try this anyway. Nothing to lose at this point. I really wonder if this is going to work. So we have to fit this exactly i'm not sure if i fit that exactly but we'll just try it i need to add this plate that i took out before okay. do you think it's gonna work or not i am hopeful the moment of truth oh my goodness it looks like a catastrophe Definitely could have been worse. Look at that. It actually looks pretty grungy, which is not bad. I'm totally gonna use this and it totally covered up where I had some ink on there before. Actually, this is quite a cool effect. Did I just invent something new? I don't know. I feel like a genius at this point. <laughs> just going to clean this with a cloth. Probably this is what Tim was demonstrating in his live. <laughs> Probably I'm just doing what he did anyway. Okay, not bad. But it needs something else. So I have these rub-ons called Remnant Rubs. Never used them. And this might be the perfect opportunity. So you get two sheets in this set and you get a wooden stick. Okay, what do we rub on here? So the numbers kind of disappear, so that's a no. Amusement only, only. That's too big. I do kind of like this light bulb. Well, then let's just do that. So I guess we peel this off and let's just place that middle-ish and then let's rub it. Oh, this is so exciting. It's something new. Okay. Uh, nope, not coming off. What am I doing wrong? Still not coming off, like not at all. I do have a piece of <laughs> the one on top coming off though. What? Other instructions. <laughs> Pressure sensitive transfers that can be applied to various surfaces. Really? <laughs> Are you sure? Because it's not happening. I don't know what else to do. I'm pressing really hard. Oh, no, it's partially coming off. Okay, Let's keep at it. Wow, I didn't know this was so difficult. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, now it worked. Okay, takes more effort than I imagined. Hmm. Maybe like this. That looks interesting. Should we give it some antennae? 
let me zoom you in. This way you get a better view of my filthy craft desk. <laughs> So I have these antennae. Well, they're actually not antennae. They're actually meant for flower crafting, but they're perfect as antennae. And I, mm, either, I think I want the black ones. So what works well is if you bend them and cross them over like that. Obviously we're going to have to tape them on the back. They're not very visible in black. So let's try these lilac ones. Yeah, I think that's better. So let's get some tape. Then I'll just cut away those pieces that are visible right there. And let's glue it down. Okay. I'd say I need, I need a little bit more practice with the rubbons. <laughs> Because I don't know what that's doing there, but we're just going to ignore that. Okay, that's an interesting card. And that's going to go in here. And we've learned something new. We can make fun distressed edges. Huh. And I think that's a great note to end this little session here. Thank you so much for sticking around if you're still here and I hope you have fun in your own journals. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.